again, this would have to be the hottest day since I've been here. And it's wonderful. We're sitting in the shade here in a beautiful spot. Beautiful changing backdrop. Davey really likes a lot. And uh, it's just so peaceful. But anyway, Davey wanted me to say a few of my stories. Wanted to hear the one about Farm Age 7 in 1994. I told you about my radio productions and stuff. Well, anyway, I was working for with, with Willie. You never say, I'm working for Willie. You say, I'm working with Willie. Big difference to him. So, anyway, I, I'm doing this, you know, and I got an opportunity to broadcast all 13 hours of Farm Aid on international shortwave radio, which was under the control of WRNO out of New Orleans, one of the most powerful radio stations in America. And the owner was a big, uh, heavy said dude was it right there behind me. And uh, they kept wanting me to read off the, the uh, call letters of the shortwave thing. And man, it was 16 miles long. And I just couldn't do it. It got kind of pissed off with me, I think. But anyway, I'll never forget that because um, when it came to midnight hour, are we still on? Okay, when it came to midnight hour, they had to make a decision, and a bee, a Vermont bee, just bit me on the calf. That felt pretty good. And I love the energy of, of stings, especially bee stings. We won't, we won't go there. I'm a slow-talking Texan, and I put uh, people to sleep many times. I've had my kids tell me to shut up, Dad, more often than I care to remember. But that's cool. So, when it come midnight, we, we had a decision to make. Does he flip full power to the second half of the world for Neil Young? And so he had to get permission from Willie and the farm aid people to do that. And right at the last second, man, that clock is going like this. We got permission to do that. And they went to the whole second half of the world. <laughs> I'm like, hello. <laughs> and Neil Young was down there, and they took, asked Neil Young, the farm aid person who ever was, said, please don't play that new song of yours. It was like 20 minutes long, and it's a real radical song they had written. So naturally, Neil Young starts, starts out with it. We're like laughing our ass off up there. And anyway, yeah, it's a long story. But how I even got there is, is uh, the story Davey wants me to tell. And I got this opportunity and I had very, very little money. And uh, I didn't have a vehicle that was free, except for my mother-in-law's vehicle. It was a uh, 92 Sable. And my mother-in-law, uh, bless her heart, she's passed away now. Sweetest lady that ever lived, I promise you. She had a saying uh, when you asked, how you doing? She would always say, it's all misery, but no rewards. And uh, I recorded 128 songs, and I recorded that uh, it's all misery, but no rewards in her memory. I just want to throw that in there. So anyway, I knew my mother-in-law wouldn't mind if I told her that I was going to New Orleans, but I was kind of, just didn't feel right about it. So I told everybody that I was going up into the Texas Hill Country in the total opposite direction for a few days of camping or a few days of, you know, getting away and so they work. So nobody knew I was going to New Orleans. So I go all the way to New Orleans and I don't know what to expect. And uh, I stayed at Fred's. He was living in the Baton Rouge suburbs of that time. I remember staying at his place that eventually burnt down. And uh, <clears throat> I went to the breakfast that morning at the Hilton. Huge fr friggin' uh, place there. Uh, dining room was just stuck with his off the chart, free, which, I you know, that's a pretty good deal. So everybody that was connected to Outlaw for Peace drove up from Austin in a Winnebago. Not a real big Winnebago, but in a Winnebago. I was the only one who had a vehicle. And there was maybe, the core of Outlaw for Peace was maybe uh, no more than 10 people, I'd say. And uh, great hands, coordination is still there. So. Uh, I was with these people, you know, not a big group, but um, 
I was the only one with a vehicle. So my vehicle suddenly became a VIP. And I was giving a VIP pass on my mother-in-law's car, which she doesn't even know is there, right behind the Superdome in New Orleans. Form 87, 1994. <laughs> and in the trunk of that car, I mean, there it was, you know, so I, they depended on me to run errands. They depended on that car to, to go to the airport and pick up celebrities. They took, depended on my mother-in-law's car to take people from the Superdome to the Hilton when the evening was over, might be 2 a.m., whatever, because I was there like four days, three and a half days, something like that. And so, by the way, I'm a big fan of water. I really am. I try to drink as much water as I can. I like to drink beer, too. Yeah, I do. And I will when this filming is over. But when I don't drink beer, I like to drink lots of water. I highly recommend this Vermont Natural Spring Water. Mm. The oil of the soul. Okay, so that car suddenly became highly important. But here's, here's the humorous part about the car. In the trunk of the car, my mother-in-law had just returned from a visit to one of her relatives who was married to a, a very, I never met her, but she, in picture, she was a rather attractive uh, Taiwan. She came from overseas somewhere, and she was, had a big old bag, one of them black uh, garbage bags full of lingerie. We're talking about silky panties, fine bras, uh, negligees. I mean, I didn't look, you know, look at it, of course, but you know, who would? But it was there. And every time I pick up people from the airport, we had to load their suitcases. I had to take that big old garbage bag full of lingerie and put it on the cement and put their stuff in there and wedge that. Because it was soft, I was able to squeeze it in there, and then I'd take them. And I had, on the CD player, I had uh, Exploding Bass by, uh, Rick, performed by Ricky Davis and uh, Brown Trout and the Lunkers. Wonderful CD day about fishing called Untangled, but I always played that song. As soon as I got in the car, boom, and I got so many comments, where'd you get that, you know? But anyway, so it's good marketing for me and David. So I, that long bag of laundry become legendary at the very end. At the very end, oh, but let me allow me to say while I'm there, I'm like uh, the greeter back, back of the, the Superdome there. When people would drive in our area, it was my job to ask what they were there for and that they, they couldn't park there and, you know, you know that kind of stuff. I'll never forget that. A van drove up and they opened the, the van door, an old school van. Guy walks out with his two girls and he shakes my hand. I said, Eddie Russell. He looks at me and says, yeah. He says, he said, what? what? And I said, Eddie Russell. He said, oh, no way, man. He's like pumping my hand. His name was Eddie Russell. <laughs> like two in the morning, you're meeting somebody with the same name. And he lived right on Willie's golf course, right next to Willie's golf course. And he was good friends with Jimmy Dale Court, who me and Davey filmed, the grand, only grandson of Jimmy Rogers. So long story there. Willie's golf course, we filmed that in 1992. <laughs> so... There's Eddie Russell with these two beautiful girls, and so anyway, we became good friends after they parked, you know, we, we spoke to George together even, you know, and so that was one thing that happened, but uh, when it came time for, after Farm Aid was all over, I had to take people to the Hilton, and two of my two co-hosts on this radio pr production were the legendary Tom Steinbeck, who John, who John Steinbeck's son, famous writer. I recently reread Cannery, Cannery Row and uh, uh, Mice and Men back to back. Oh, I mean, he was one of my idols back in the day. So here is his son, and he works for Vanity Fair. And my other host was a legendary Wavy Gravy, the original, the MC at the original Woodstock, 1969. Always dresses in a clown suit and with a paint and everything. And he was, those were my co-hosts, and they were scared to death of radio. It's funny as hell. But they, one of the main reasons they were up there, because they wanted Wavy Gravy to interview uh, the editor of High Times Magazine, which he did. And he also interviewed uh, 
Paul Rodriguez, the uh, comedian. And so they wanted that combination, and you were allowed to say anything you wanted to on shortwave radio. So it was extremely wonderful experience, and uh, I got to interview people, and I didn't have headsets, it, and the roar of the music and the crowd, it was very tough, but I interviewed people, and I would stick that microphone way up there in there, and down and up and down and up. Billy Joe Shaver, David Allen Coe, uh, Miss, Miss America, Chuck Yeager, the, this Indian chief come out there from New Orleans, and, and he has to, it was kind of weird. I said, do you write songs on your drum? He had his drum with him. He said, yes, I do. I said, have you ever written a song about Farm Aid, our farm? He said, yes, I have. I said, would you play it? He said, yes, I will. So he starts pleading on that drum. Boy, I stuck that microphone right in that drum, and he went, the damn song was about six, seven minutes long. <laughs> it was cool as hell. So anyway, it's a great experience. And uh, uh, come time to leave, and, and in... Uh, a couple of months before that, Willie had sent word that he wanted me to do a radio show for Jimmy Rogers and a radio show for Little Joe Hernandez, which I did at his request. And so I'm getting ready to leave, and Bob Wishoff of Outlaw for Peace comes up to me and he says, Eddie, I got something for you. And he hands me $300, and he says, this is from Willie for doing no show. So, wow, you know, suddenly I come out of that deal with 300 bucks. So, and I drove my old mother-in-law's car right back to Columbus. Well, I stayed at Fred's again on the way back. Bought a little motel room. I just visited and then left. Anyway, so yeah, that's my farm aid story. Now, well, in Mexico, as we all know, things ain't so good Those drug cartels live in hell And it's understood They got severed heads And the brutally dead Buried underground And they're selling guns To the old and young But a quarter pound But they got Maria Yes, they got Maria yeah, they got Maria Anita Senorita Lopez 